All right, so we're going to start on um, looking at the concepts associated with photosynthesis, which, as we know, is divided into uh, two stages um, or sets of processes, the light reactions, which we uh, can see happening here in the thylakoids down here. This is basically looking at the chloroplast. Um, and the second stage is the Calvin cycle, which is also um, referred to as the photosynthetic carbon reduction cycle. So sometimes we refer to it as the PCR cycle. So that's shown here. And we didn't, we will do or we will have done an exercise in uh, class showing uh, all the inputs and outputs of these different stages. So in the light reactions, um, the input that we're looking for here is water. And as you can see over here on this diagram, water is, um, the source of water is from the soil. And we're also looking at an input here of light energy. And that light energy is going to be converted into a form that comes out of the light reactions as ATP and NADPH. So what we're going to see is that uh, the energy is captured by ATP and electrons with energy are captured from that are coming in from water are going to be captured um, by NADP plus to form NADPH. Uh, the other sort of byproduct or output that we want to take note of here is oxygen. And so you can see up in the diagram here, oxygen is given off by um, uh, leaves the plant through stomata, uh, but we could also see um, perhaps if, well that would be the closest um, structures that would help move oxygen out of the plant. Um, let's see. The outputs from the light reactions are connected to the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle relies on ATP and NADPH so that it can take a carbon dioxide molecule or a set of carbon dioxide molecules and convert them into a carbon-based compound, uh, which is basically sugars. The direct output is a three-carbon sugar, whoops, SU, sugar phosphate um, molecule, SU. And that three-carbon sugar phosphate molecule can be then used to make things like uh, sucrose, uh, starch, which can occur either inside the chloroplast or out in the cytoplasm, um, glucose, and fructose. Whoops, let's draw that a little clearer. glucose and fructose. All right, um, CO2 of course is coming in over here from the atmosphere um, and diffusing through various structures leading to the stroma of the chloroplast. So the light reactions occur on the thylakoids or um, inside or outside the thylakoid membranes. The Calvin cycle uh, reactions occur within the stroma of the chloroplast. Um, so that gives us an idea of where we're going with these topics. We're going to start with Chapter 7, which is specifically on light reactions. And in Chapter 8, we'll talk more about the Calvin cycle. All right, so we're looking now at Chapter 7, light reactions. So... One of the things that, um, one of the concepts that gets emphasized here in the light reactions and in general um, is the concepts associated with uh, uh, reduction versus oxidation reactions or redox reactions. So when we look at our overall photosynthesis equation here, CO2 plus water. Um, produces a, you know, uh, traditionally we use glucose as the indication of the product, but a CH2O product um, plus oxygen. 
So in this case, carbon dioxide is gaining electrons, and so we see that uh, molecule is becoming reduced is um, is being reduced. And water is providing the electrons for that reaction. So we're going to take this over to here to oxygen, and, and so water gets oxidized to form oxygen. So we have to be comfortable with the terms oxidized versus um, reduced as we go through the light reactions starting right away. Okay. So in the light reactions, we have several um, protein complexes that you can see right in the thylakoid membrane. So we're looking at the thylakoid membrane right here. And in the thylakoid membrane, um, is a series of protein complexes that are part of the electron transport chain. So uh, the electron transport chain consists of photosystem one, or sorry, photosystem two comes first. That's what we're looking at here, um, which consists of a light harvesting complex complex plus a reaction center. So if we look up here we can see uh, just a typical um, either photosystem one or two showing us the surrounding light harvesting complex and the light harvesting complex acts like an antenna of chlorophyll molecules that we can see throughout the light harvesting complex. And so as light radiation comes in, the chlorophyll molecules have an electron that gets excited and passes that energy on to the next chlorophyll molecule, which is through radiationless transfer all the way till it reaches the reaction center chlorophyll molecules. So that's kind of a characteristic um, process of energy transfer within the photosystems. And the first one that we're looking at here is photosystem two. Um, then another component of the electron transport chain is the right here, the cytochrome B6F complex. And so electrons are going to be passed through a mobile electron carrier here called plastoquinone. Uh, to the cytochrome B6F complex. Uh, another component of the a pro a proton complex of the within the, elect the electron transport chain is another photosystem, <coughs> which is photosystem one. And again, it consists of a light harvesting complex plus, <coughs> plus a reaction center, and we're just abbreviating those, similar to what we saw up here, um, which will Again, capture sunlight energy, transfer it to the chlorophyll A molecules of the reaction center, and then excite the electrons there, which will then be um, used to reduce a series, um, a ne the next mobile electron carrier, which is ferrodoxin, um, and then send that electron on to produce NADPH. So these are the components, these three protein complexes that are part of the electron transport chain. And these are um, here we go. These are, uh, this is one component of the light reactions on the thylakoid membrane. Um, the second component here, B component, I guess we could call it, is the ATP synthase complex or coupling factor zero, coupling factor one um, complex, which synthesizes ATP. So once the electron transport chain has brought electrons through, there's, as a, as a result, a, an accumulation of hydrogen ions that are going to then drive this um, ATP synthase complex to produce ATP. So this is just a general summary of the light reactions. So now we're going to take a look at specifically what's happening in photosystem 2, uh, which is at the start of the electron transport chain. Um, so in, in more detail. So here we have light energy, which is uh, entering um, the light harvesting complex. And again, that energy transfer from chlorophyll to chlorophyll molecule 
is by inductive residence, resonance um, or radiationless transfer inductive resonance all the way to um, the energy is transferred to the special chlorophyll A molecules, one of the special chlorophyll A molecules that's in the reaction center. So right here we have the reaction center associated with chlorophyll, I mean associated with pho photosystem 2. These chlorophyll molecules are referred to as P680 uh, because they have an affinity for absorbing sunlight or light energy from uh, 680 nanometers of light. They can absorb light energy from a variety of um, wavelengths within the visible spectrum, but they have the strongest affinity for this light wave, this uh, wavelength of light. All right, so when energy reaches the P680 molecule, we can abbreviate that over here, um, when energy, light energy comes in, it's going to an excite an electron and we're going to symbolize that with that asterisk there. So now P680 has an excited electron. And it's going to pass that electron then on to the first uh, electron acceptor, which is right here. We're going to abbreviate it there, which is referred to as pheophyton. And so this is a reduction step. So P680 uh, reduces pheophyton. And now pheophyton has the, um, the energized electron. All right, so it's now been reduced. Then, P then pheophyton can uh, pass that electron onto the next electron acceptor, which is located here as the QA, at the Q8, QA site, which is called a quinone molecule. So a quinone uh, molecule that is bound to the QA binding site in the reaction center. Um, is now going to receive the electron. So Pheophyton has sent that electron. We'll just kind of summarize it like this. Here comes the electron. So Pheophyton reduces the quinone. And then the quinone molecule is going to go, uh, it's going to send that electron onto this QB binding site um, where Lasso quinone is located. So now plasto quinone, uh, which is symbolized as PQ, is um, going to become reduced. So this is a reduction step. A reduction step reduces plasto quinone. So when plasto quinone uh, receives one electron, it still has to wait around for um, another electron. So two P680 molecules have to send an, an energizer, an uh, excited electron on up to plastoquinone. And then once it does that, it becomes um, a reduced form of, uh, goodness, a, a reduced form of plastoquinone that now can pick up two hydrogen ions. So we now can symbolize it this way. And that's where we usually recognize plastoquinone as, as reduced. Now, at, at each step along the path here within the reaction center, as one molecule becomes reduced, the, the molecule that remains behind is oxidized. So when P680 reduces pheophyton, it becomes oxidized. When pheophyton, uh, which is now reduced, reduces plastoquinone, or the, sorry, the QA quinone bound molecule, then Pheophyton becomes oxidized. Then the QA quinone bound molecule uh, reduces plastoquinone in the QB site. Then the quinone QA bound uh, molecule becomes oxidized. So finally, we have PQH2 in its uh, reduced form. And as I said, the P680 is now oxidized. So we symbolize that with the P680 plus. And down below, you can see P680 now is uh, in its oxidized form is on the luminal side of the thylakoid membrane, whereas uh, the plastoquinone is physically separated by being closer to the stromal side, and that prevents P680 from re, uh, reducing itself by stealing that electron. 
P680 plus, we have to remember, is one of the strongest oxidizing agents, so it has to be physically separated from plastoquinone.